Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. It was quite an interesting weekend of motorsport. We'll come on to that in a, minute, in a moment because there is a big fat elephant in the room uh, that happened at Goodwood. That we will come on to that in a moment. Uh, we got some Formula One news. We got some motorsport news. Um, yeah. Valentino Rossi, he's in the news again. Uh, winning, and, winning. Yeah, fantastic. With Nick De Vries, I think someone's feeling worse than you we, are. Maybe after something might have happened with Nick De Vries getting getting the boots. We'll have a chat about. Red we'll have a chat boot. about the news first. Uh, but World Two uh, Bikes as well. We got Formula E carnage in Rome, woof. and then we got uh, big rain delays for NASCAR. But let's let's start off with what's in the, and then at the end we will go through this <laughs> in the room because um, the big reveal, the big yeah. reveal. Oh, the reveal that I, I absolutely did not want in my life. But there you go. Um, so Red Bull, Red Bull news, of course, is if you've been, unless you've been living under a rock, Daniel Ricciardo is coming Rick- back. Ricciardo? No, Ricciardo, yeah. I was about yeah. to say, no, yeah. Uh, is coming back and poor old Nick De Vries didn't get very long and they're quite brutal, which which goes back to my point every week about uh, Checo still being there as to why he is still there. But because um, they're the normally a little more shot. brutal than this. The question is, I was surprised, you know, I mean, the public wanted Ricardo, you know, but uh, anyone within motorsport probably thought Liam Lawson deserved it more. In fact, he won the Super Formula at Japan uh, this weekend to reinforce his credential as the next serious Red Bull protégé. But do you think Ricardo signed that with any sort of uh, contract beyond the end of the year? Because you no chance. Thought, you know, so no, he's just... just- it's a showbiz. So it's a showbiz contract that's going to sell T-shirts. That's a, and, and yeah, but he, baseball, why is he doing it? Because he's, he's he's in for a big fall. If I mean, he's probably thinking, "I'm going to get Perez. I'm going to be so impressive in the Alpha Tauri that I'll then be in the Red Bull instead of." Um, oh. That's what he's thinking. That's what he's got. Otherwise, why do it? Why go to a back of the field? Because he always said, "No, I'll never, no, mate, I'll never go into a back of the field car." In his classic Welsh accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a big thing. I, you know, it should have gone to Liam Lawson. Um, I think everybody, but they, all these manufacturers said we can't risk a rookie, you know, and that we've got to have championship points, manufacturers' points are more important. But you look at what Oscar Piastri's done. He hasn't put a foot wrong, hasn't damaged the car. He's as quick as, uh, as, as Lando, pretty much, at the British Grand Prix. So why the manufacturers keep on turning back to the old names, uh, defeats me. Uh, Liam Lawson should have had it, but every, the public will be happy. The showbiz world will be happy that the smiling Ricardo, but uh, whether he's smiling at the end of the year or not remains to be seen. Well, he is, he's just what, he, he must be the most likable person on, on, yeah. on the tour without any We question. all love him, we all love yeah, him. Yeah, of course. But, you know. me, me too. He's infectious. Uh, that big smile he's got and his laugh. Uh, well, well, whilst the, Liam Lawson whilst the, for me. Yeah, whilst the Formula One clique continued to close ranks about extra inches, well, I was tweeting like mad about all the Italian the Ferrari mates saying, you know, any new team must make a significant improvement to Formula One. Well, adding four cars in my book and giving four more drivers a chance at the, at the top level is would be a significant improvement. If you improve something by 20%, I think that's a significant improvement, but... They There's really not much are. going on. It's, it's quite closed doors now, isn't it? Ten teams, yeah. and you know, know we love our ten teams, and, and we're we're going to Vegas and we're going to Miami and uh... money, money. We're going to get more money. We're, we're not let anyone else join the pot and remove our money. We've yeah. made Formula One. We're going to keep it with 20, ten teams. So very but frustrating. I think, but I think just to reiterate on your point, the fact that Oscar Piastri has come in and yeah. uh, and he's done it, and you know he yeah. is he is super. He should have got a podium last week at uh, Silverstone. Yeah. Uh, he just missed out with a bit of a bit of bad luck, and he'll he'll be there now with this new McLaren. So, and I think even Lando is thinking, "My goodness, I wasn't expecting to be so close behind me." So, because uh, yeah. Lando is exceptional. So we wait to see, and they're all the, the design teams are saying that the 2026 cars will be in the same performance envelope as what we got now, which is a really bad news for most people, or not for the aero aero loonies that want to high tech, high tech, high tech cars. So. There's not much to look forward to in Formula One if they keep to only 10 teams and keep the same sort of overweight cars that we've got now. And it all remains to be seen. Will Ricardo regret it? Will Formula One slowly disappear up its own high-tech rear we'll end? Let's hope Meanwhile, not. in IndyCar, again, no interest in driver developments because IndyCar, um, you know, I would say it's a great driver's format where the driver matters more than the team and anyone can come in and win it. 
And lo and behold, last weekend, we had this rookie, well, not a rookie, race last year as well, this Danish guy, Christian Lundgaard, um, dominated the Toronto street race. He got on pole position. He's been on pole position. Uh, the the Indy Indy, um, road course as well. And he just dominated the race, led from start to finish pretty much, apart from all the tyre changing, the strategy change that goes on in the middle. We'll mention that later. But it's funny, you see, this driver, who's a good driver? Because Lundgaard, who's a classic, it's weird. You that wasn't never, a little dig for just, later, was it? That was a little dig about... No, 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 no digging, no digging. <laughs> um, you know, here's a kid that, that dominated, won loads of karting championships. But every time I look at anyone driver's CV, they all seem to have won loads of karting. <laughs> There's so many different categories in karting that any carter's CV has got multiple wins on it. But he got into cars in 2017, and he was just a star. In Formula 4, he did two or three different championships, Spain and Denmark, did 43 races. He won 17 of them, so he won nearly half. So that's talent. Um, then in 2018, he was second in the Formula Renault Europe Cup. They got signed up by the Renault um, Academy, which then became the Alpine uh, Academy. So he was really a young man on his way, shooting up. Um, and whilst he was at the Alpine Academy, he had a test in the Formula One car, but he went to the Formula Three and he finished sixth in the championship. Lots of sort of problems. Um, then he did two years of Formula Two. First year of Formula Two, he finished seventh in the points. And the second year, he finished 12th in the points. If you sort of read his CV on, on Wiki, you know, there was, there was penalties for speeding and overtaking and cars breaking down, but he was with the same um, ART team. And we always talk about this with these cars that are supposed to be identical. If you don't get with the right team, we always mention Prima because nine times out of ten, Prima is probably the best team in Formula 2 and Formula 3. Um, and so he was dropped by the Alpine Academy and it all just just went pear-shaped. And you, you said, well, how is this? Well, maybe he wasn't any good after all. You're, th- you're now doubting how we thought this is a rising star or have we got a big mistake on our hands? But all of a sudden, I, he obviously, he went, he, he got a test with Ray Hal Lanigan in the middle of 2021, an IndyCar test. And they must have brought money to that, I presume. Obviously, there's still, you know, you've got to buy your way into these tests. And um, was so impressive with the test. They signed him for last year. I mean, he didn't do that well last year. I think that what his best result was IndyCar. But he had a publisher to say, and then he, now he's, he's, you know, and he's with Ray Hal Letterman, this team that didn't qualify for yeah. Indy, you know, the slowest cars. They were useless at, at, at the opening round in St. Petersburg. And, you know, he's come in and he's, when the cars were bad, he's, he's beaten team boss Graham Rahal. He's beaten Jack Harvey, who was a, a British up-and-coming rider. So he has come in and he's been quicker than his teammates. And now they've given him a car that can win. Even though, I mean, Harvey qualified, I think, 19th in Toronto. And uh, Graham Rahal qualified right at the back. So his other two cars in his team weren't quick. So he's, he's obviously got talent. So now we're thinking, it just shows, you know, it's so hard to evaluate talent until it gets to the top of the tree you, you need luck. you don't really know. you need you need luck I, and sorry to bring football into this we're both football fans and and uh yeah. one of the southampton uh faithful peter crouch i watched his thing last night I watched a lot of tv last night just trying to <laughs> take my mind off things um, other things and he so he had a big signing from southampton to liverpool as lots of your yeah. guys did and he didn't score i think for 18 games and he's there as a center forward to yeah. score and his and the crowd are shouting at him and everybody the papers are shouting at him and then he scored and 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 he said if it wasn't for that and then he was off but if yeah. they dropped him on game 17 or 16 and we have heard yeah. so many inspirational to- stories it's only because I, I just watched that he would have disappeared he'd be playing yeah. for you know yeah. like bristol city or something um, so well yeah. done christian lunga well done you know, amazing perseverance you got the ride and you've proved your talent and you know now lp must be thinking oh well maybe maybe we should uh, get him get him get him signed back up again um, did, you, did you think tiff that there would be a stage because formula one there is absolutely no question everyone we spoke to over the weekend uh at goodwood they, they were saying it's going far too much on the entertainment side and they don't care so much about the racing do you think it will ever become there'll ever be a point where the old faithful like us who like motorsport, motor racing, will start watching IndyCar more than Formula One. Well, I, mean, I think they will, which is, I mean, I've, I've tweeted as well. I've got a new one. I want, you know, the live money in golf that's transformed or upsetting golf. I want li- that sort of backing to run an a IndyCar World Series 2026 when the new Formula One regulations come out and the cars will be active aero and still as heavy, 50% electric, all sorts of negative stories coming into line that if you did run a uh, a world IndyCar formula. I would get eight teams, three cars in each team, uh, a bit like live like in their golf teams. So you could get you could get uh, you know the, the Formula Two and Formula Three teams to run 
So you need eight people to run uh, these three cars each. I'd have two regular drivers in each car. Then I'd have, a, I'd have a, a, a star turn every week in every country. You'd have a different third driver, you know, local star, local kid. I might have to pay people like Ricardo and uh, Bottas to a few million <laughs> to come and join my breakaway series. We've got a couple of names. And I think it would take off. I think it'd be great entertainment. Lewis, Lewis um, may be retired by then. Yeah, maybe I could buy Lewis. <laughs> I'd, I'd be the Greg Norman. How much did Greg Norman get paid? About 300 I million. 300 million or something crazy, yeah. yeah. So I'm the Greg Norman at this. So when we find this uh, backer to back my World IndyCar series, and I think it would work because I think, you know, the majority of people... We're racing, to, but the trouble is now, you know, as we talked about last week, the, the diehard racing to you is getting pushed away. We've got these DJ music that really annoys uh, traditional spectators. You know, we've got the... Hang on, you think traditional spectators are old people, old grumpy people? Well, not old people. I think there are plenty of young kids as well that, you know, grew up as little boys, you know, Actually, we had, a cup of tea. And... we had a cup of tea yesterday, and I said, can we go outside? The music's too loud behind me, where we were. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, I'm, 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 I'm being so, I think it's it's a big deal. You know, obviously, the Formula One is going to be booming for two or three or four more years, but I really worry of the 2026 regulations. I, so. I do worry with these little um, single series uh, series, though. What, what was the one they did many years ago where they did uh, countries A series something? What was that? Yeah, but that worked really well. The, that that the first A1 GP, which was yeah. like these three and a half liter popping, they sounded like DFV Formula One cars. Wonderful popping and banging. They were really hard to drive. Well, very big. poor air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the talent came through. And that's yeah, when did. Nico Hulkenberg, Hulkenberg was one of the drivers that just starred in that series. And it was really was a driver could do and make a difference. And then they changed these little sort of Ferrari, more downforcey cars um, that cost them the championship loads of money. I mean, bankrupt the championship because they desperately wanted a big name engine. So they've got Ferrari turbo engines as well, which turbo engines getting equality is very hard when they're all supposed to be the same, but they never are. So they killed off A1 by following the... So it wasn't really the formula's fault. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so there's that formula. There's the football one as well as Super League, whatever, Super something. So people have tried breakaway single-seater series and that haven't worked, but it just needs too much money to, to break away from what the Formula 1 have. But, I mean, look, Toronto is fantastic. Even the Lungard dominated. Uh, he started on the, the quicker tyre, the alternate tyre, whereas the running second place, a lot of them ran the longer tyre. So he actually sprinted away at the start. Um, then when he pitched, he dropped back to the ninth or tenth as usual. Strategy took over as the harder tires ran longer. Loads of racing and loads of overtaking, people diving up the inside into tight turns with walls. But it's a great racing track, Toronto. Um, and so eventually when he came out, he had to overtake Pelot, the championship leader, but he damaged his nose, Pelot, the Portuguese kid. Um, and really, Lungard was helped because Pelot, with a very broken nose, held off a pack of uh, cars <laughs> in his tail that couldn't get by him because he placed his car. So it was really entertaining. I mean, we got an extra Brit on joins this weekend. Sadly, when Jack Harvey, as I said, to, you know, Lungard's teammate, he only qualified 19th. He was in a first corner crash, uh, which I think was maybe his fault, Jack. Um, it was a three. It's always a three wide. And he was on the inside. And the brain, you can see the car next to you, and so often you just don't think there's a third car. And the third car was poor old Tom Blomquist, the British driver who was given a one-off chance because um, Simon Pagano, that had that huge rollover, rollover um, up at mid-Ohio, uh, still isn't fit enough. So they put in Tom for his one race, and he qualified uh, 20th out of the 27. But he was the third car, so Jack moved over on the guy in the middle, hit him, hit him, put Blomkiss into the wall. So his IndyCar debut lasted one corner. Um, a... Another another little side story, though. Um, also, Lugard's other teammate, team boss Graham Rahal, he qualified last, 27th. And he stopped, because the track was blocked at turn one with this crash that took out Harvey and Blomquist. So the the way they're thinking, I mean, you couldn't do this in forward, but you get disqualified. He hooks reverse, reverses back out of the corner, because he knows that the runoff to the straight first corner has got a bypass. You go round and you rejoin the track after the first corner. So to avoid going a lap down by being stopped with a blocked track, he straight away he was into reverse, <laughs> reversed up, went down the escape road, re-emerged. So he's, so he's right at the back of the pack, which is now down to about 20 cars, like seven or yeah. five were knocked out. And he fought all the way through the ninth, you know, round a street race. Wow. You know, it's like, you know, doing that at Monaco or something. So loads of entertainment. I mean, it's just an entertainment. And you get surprise winners. 
uh, from underdog teams. Rahal Leto are not really the best team at the moment. So, you know, watch Just IndyCar. That. So watch IndyCar. Uh, so, so another surprise winner? Well, certainly wasn't a surprise winner on two wheels, but uh, on four wheels. Yes. He's surprising a few people now because the doctor is winning on, on four wheels. So joy, joy. Well. Enter, entertaining us. Uh, the the Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS, to give it its snazzy little title, <laughs> uh, had a round at Masada. Two races, actually, the weekend, two short sprint races. And Masada was, I think it's Rossi's hometown or nearest to his home thing. And when he used to run MotoGP, there were, it was like Verstappen with the Orange Army. There was just a bank of yellow of, of Rossi and Valentino. And he won the second race. He only came eighth in the first race. Um, sharing with the Belgian Maxime Martin. Uh, they won the second race. I think their teammates were leading BMW M4 GT3. They, they were a bit like a, a teammate that was ahead of them at a bad pit stop. But anyway, so Rossi wins at Masano in a car, which uh, which the crowd went as mad as they did with his MotoGP day. So it was fantastic to see. Um, the second race also run by Italian, which was actually the first race. I mean, Rafael Marciello, Marciello. Um, one in a Mercedes there with his Russian teammate, Timur Boguslavaski. You could, um, you're good yeah. with these pronunciations. You're a lot better than me. That's no, sure. Nobody will remember how to pronounce <laughs> Boguslavaski or the fact that... Uh, the shame, it's, one, it's funny how some series, you know, whereas the, the British drivers I mentioned a lot in IMSA racing in America, a lot of the World Sports Car Series, they don't seem to get drives in this Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe powered by AWS. Um, you know, no British teams seem to be in it, and it's you know, it's the sprint series, not so much the um, the endurance series where British teams are involved, where there's longer races and more drivers, but this sprint uh, series that there's just all European teams, European drivers, plus the on Russian. Um, I didn't watch it in the racing, but it's still great racing normally with uh, Audis and BMWs and Ferraris and Mercedes. Um, I love GT3, it's a great formula. Um, so yeah, joy in Italy. Much joy in that part of Italy. Um, more Italy, of course. We had the former E's in Rome. So there's a lot oh, going on in Italy. Oh, my goodness. That was <laughs> bloody carnage. <laughs> a, very hot, uh, a very hot Rome. Global warming, hot Rome. I, know, I, was, I was amazed the race wasn't cancelled, to be honest. Yeah. How did they let drivers drive in such a heat wave? Killer <laughs> heat wave. I couldn't believe they allowed it. And there were spectators sitting in open grandstands. How can they do that? How can the organisers allow them in this heat wave? Sorry, taking the mickey. Mustn't take the mickey. I'll get. I'm, I'll I'm, get I'm not. I'm silenced. not a conspiracy theorist in any way. But now on the weather reports, what oh. they do is when when it's above thirty or even late twenties, it, it'll be bright red. Oh, and, no. and yeah, what watch out. Burning, man. burning. Anyway, it obviously was too hot because the, it, the heat went to the drivers' heads, and it was Sam Bird who's had a bad week basically because he got he's been dropped by Jaguar for next year. Um, they've signed the. Um, Envision driver, what well, championship leader was championship leader Cassidy um, to join the factory Jaguar team. They both run Jaguar uh, power plants. So poor old Sam been dropped and then he dropped it running third. Um, they were running up front because the Jaguars were doing very well in this really high speed section, almost flat out. And uh, he just blocked the road and the rest of the pack came round and there were some impacts of horrendous violence. Um, that took out, I think about seven new monocoques had to be found. People were borrowing spare tubs overnight because they had a second race on the Sunday. But it was a massive shunt. Um, but Mitch Evans, his teammate, was trying to catch up the title. He's running third in the championship. He went, through, went on to win that race. Uh, whereas Brit Jake Dennis in the uh, Andretti Porsche powered machine had a fourth place. He's, he's dropping back. So it's looked like, oh, if um, Mitch can win again on Sunday, the Jaguar team will be right into the championship. And if they don't win, then uh, Cassidy and the Envision uh, Jaguar power machine would win the championship. But instead of the uh, early on in the second race, Dennis got the lead from pole position. And uh, he was battling with Cassidy for the lead. They went side by side in a tight corner. And Mitch and his Jaguar, just they just caught him out. They break more than he thought. And he locked the re he locked the rear axle, which I need a Formula E person to tell me down below. Is hard because they haven't got any brakes on the rear axle. So somehow the computer did you see it lock, you see it lock or did you read it? it well, you, no, because the car went sideways, so it did. Yeah. It had more braking on the rear. You didn't actually see the locking, but if when you press the brake pedal a bit harder, it must tell the regen division of the computer to do more regening. Because the only way to slow the rear end of the car is with regen. 
the computer has to decide how much is anyway. So he got sideways and went into the back of Cassidy, over the top of him, um, took them both out of the race effectively. They both limped back to the pits, which allowed Dennis to cruise to win and make a huge championship lead of, uh, what's got, 24 points, I think. So was uh, it a slightly blind the... corner or something? Because they were just, all... No, just a, just a sharp... I mean, they're, very, they're quite bumpy, some of those streets, under yeah. breaking the braking zone, so there's a bit of bumping going on and then having to brake a bit harder. I just got the rear to not quite lock up, but certainly over break the rear. Um, so, yes, yeah, so a Dennis cruised to a win. Sam Bird actually got third place in the second race. He must have felt a bit happier. But uh, it really has given Dennis. There's only one weekend left in a couple of weeks' time in London. Uh, Dennis now says he's got, he's got a 24-point lead, but you can get 29 points for a win with a pole and the fastest lap. So uh, it's not completely in the bag, but if he could finish third a couple of races, Jake Dennis should be a, a British champion in his Andretti, um, Andretti Porsche. Good. So it was entertaining. It was entertaining, but only it was a massive crash. But um, <laughs> it was a good track row. It is quite a spectacular. There's some good corners, overtaking spots, and not too much, um, you know, recharging and regenning going on. They can race pretty strongly. Okay, let's so, go. And, it, and it's a proper city centre as well. I often tell yeah. the Mickey about, you know, the city centre that's an airport outside Berlin or, a, you know, or in, in London, it's a buddy, yeah. it's a O2 Arena, not really in the city centre. So great scenes from Formula E. Let's it's, let's get the World Superbikes to Imola. Uh, good they're still for... in Italy. It's a big, big weekend. It's in yeah, all that heat. Big, a big, three, hot weekend in Italy. Three <laughs> different championships. All seem to run without any drivers dying of heat exhaustion. Um, but again, it, it's the Raz... Raz Gatsalogu. Good. Gatsalogu. Okay, let's go. So top rank one, two. I feel if you say something one, fast one. and confidently, you get away with it on the pronunciation. Top rank Raz Gatsalogu. Top rank, Razgatliogu, uh, He's coming back. He sort of thinks the championship's not over. He reckons, even though he's a lot of points behind Alvaro Bautista, who had the other win, but he had a crash and then a second. So he dropped it one race, Alvaro. Uh, Jonathan Ray, our British uh, contender, he had two thirds, but he's out of good. It really is a championship now between the uh, top rack and Alvaro. It's Alvaro. But uh, they won all the races again. The two of them won all the races again. It's, it's like... Uh, Freddie and Charlie, isn't it? In um, in our bloody racing this year, they're yeah. winning everything, are they? <laughs> so uh, yeah, good entertainment. Good entertainment in Italy last weekend, wasn't it? And heat. And There's plenty, fans. plenty going on there. Where is right, it? elsewhere uh, in the NASCAR, world, it rained. It and, rained. Um, and uh, they they're running it today, Monday afternoon. So I'm not sure what time. I'm not sure you can see it on the telly, but it rained. Got rained off yesterday. And of course, it rained in in Goodwood, where we were all having a lot of fun in the rain. And well, it weren't fun. It's awful for the people that. Why is your head drop? What's what's happening? Um, awful for the spectators who had Saturday tickets. I had a friend who had these kids over from Portugal. They only had Saturday tickets, and they couldn't go. And they'd come all the way over. And, but it was a wonderful festival, as always. The days it ran, you know, the crowds were there and loving it. It's a, it's a car show and it's sort of demonstration runs. And But the demonstration runs are quite tricky because it's still a, you know, a narrow... I understand you did a couple of demonstration runs, Paul. In, what, yeah, let, me, in... let me talk you to through Thursday and Fridays. They were amazing. <laughs> I don't... Uh, yeah, no, but uh, joking aside, uh, I did do some demonstration runs. We were filming a big item with Porsche. It's their 75th anniversary and uh, 60th anniversary of the 911. Started off with a few 911s uh, over the first couple of days. <laughs> Fast runs uh, in the supercar run. Um, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary, just all good. And then uh, they say never meet your heroes. And I met one of my heroes, the 1998 uh, Le Mans winning car, the GT1, came in 1-2. I think it was McNish's first um, Le Mans, actually. He came yeah. in, he won a couple more after that. Um and it's just a beautiful afternoon, a uh, beautiful afternoon and in, really enjoying the moment uh, until came out of, it's not Malcolm, it's Mollicum, isn't it? Mollicum, Mollicum, yeah. Mollicum. Yeah, I got it. I mean, it's, it's twitchy. I mean, it's, and, and the steering is incredibly precise. And uh, I got, I got uh, the, the back end stepped out a little bit, but there was nothing. It, was, it didn't really think anything of it, sort of corrected it. But as it corrected, the car's so wide and I was... I guess in well, it's such I've a seen narrow it, track. Yeah. Once. I don't want to see it. I, it it's well, for actually, everybody else. Paul's now a star of YouTube. We want to be <sighs> YouTube stars, but Paul's <laughs> yeah. about to beat love cars and love cars on the group oh. because you could all watch this moment. I've seen it a few times, Paul. It, it's such a shame. I mean, the, the, the thing it. about you, well, you finished the corner. It wasn't like you rushed into Monaco. Yeah. We see these people going off. But, and the trouble is, it's still a tiny bit of a curve. You're not quite straight when you think you're straight. 
Well, I've always always can. driven, as you know, driven. I've driven everything. I'm so so super lucky. And anything like that, yeah. I'll always never accelerate unless it's on the straight. And yeah. and I I think that maybe it, it, as you come out, it is a tiny. Well, it bit, just it's so, a tiny. Yeah, you just you got a bit of wheel spin, and you correct. You caught it, but yeah. the road set. You only moved two feet to the left, slightly sideways, and then you just touched the thing, and then you came around and it just took the wing off. You didn't really hit the wall. I know. I know. There's, the there's, there's, it's cosmetic da damage. You know who greeted me? The, the person that came up. Well, actually, I'll tell you who greeted me at the top of the hill. So if you've never been good at the top of the hill, it's, it's uh, the holding area. And I, I just wanted the whole world to, to, I just wanted to swallow me up. I've never, ever felt like that in my whole life. It's someone else's car. It's Porsche's priceless Le Mans winning mm. car. Uh, I got to the top. Um, I phoned you straight away and I just, you, you know, you were as just sort of... I almost didn't answer. I know, I know, I, I would have blamed you. <laughs> oh, no. And then the TV cameras oh. came over to interview me. I said, please, no. Uh, and then Mark Webber came over. He's a Porsche ambassador and oh, a yeah. bloody brilliant bloke. What a lovely... He said, mate, I'm bloody worried about it. It's a bit of cosmetic damage. Said, Don't even worry about it. And, and yeah, we've been uh, we've been chatting to him in the on the in the collecting area, haven't we? Yeah. Mark, oh, he's lovely a lovely man. bloke, really lovely bloke. I, I, who's I, managing Oscar Piastri? Oscar he's very proud and quite rightly proud of his protege. And, and but I mean, I uh, to... it takes me it takes me back. I mean, yeah, I've still got a moment of haunts for me. <laughs> 1986 Le Mans. No, it wasn't 86. It was 80, 88. It got me the years right. 88 Le Mans. And I was with a factory Toyota drive, and I just got in the cold tires uh, early evening, and it was a cold weekend. And going down to the S's, um, someone was trying to, I let someone by on my left instead of taking the lines, I should have done. So then I was out on the marbles with cold yeah. tires on the outlap, dropped it in the gravel trap, and it took about half an hour of cranes and tractors, and I'm sitting in the seat. <laughs> And I still have nightmares about it. I still sometimes, oh god, why did I do that? Why did I do that? You, know, you just want oh, you just want to go back thirty to five seconds of your life. Oh no, you, you want the you want the clocks to go back. But you can never change it, and you'll still always remember it from now on, Paul. I'm sorry, it'll be something. It'll suddenly someone will say. Good well, I remember Chris oh, Hoy doing it, and and look how many drivers, uh, pro drivers, pro drivers are oh, a lot no. better than me. Um, oh. By a long, and it wasn't way. it. Yeah, the, the, the worst thing is you weren't doing anything hooligan. You weren't over trying. No, you just no. just squeezed the pedal, maybe you know half a throttle too much. So he wasn't even full throttle. Just gave that little bit of tiny. Yeah, but uh, uh, I mean, well, the, the races have been tars, amazing. You, you were on wet tires as well in the in the dry. Well, so they were exactly... they were slicks, but they cut grooves into them because oh, okay. of course it was wetter uh, the first couple of days. So, but but you know, cold tires. But it wasn't it wasn't the tires. It was nothing. It was just it was just go YouTube, everyone. Go YouTube, YouTube. But, let me say Porsche, thank you, Porsche. thank you. If I haven't Good responded word. to Crash. your message, <laughs> no, do not do that. But if I haven't <laughs> responded to your message, thank you uh, for your message. Thanks to Rob Durant of Porsche. He he just literally said it's one of those things. He said before me, uh, um, two cars went off. He said there was oil. There wasn't oil. He, I think he's being unbelievable. Yeah, I think it was. So, yeah. So so um, but two. Did they they went off of the way in. They went off of the way in. The, the okay. Door, not, no, right. but after uh, before me, they went. That was the M1 after that we were watching. Um, yeah. I've only had one little one little dig, and that's uh, from from some of the old Caterham boys. Not obviously my boys. So I just found it so funny. People love <laughs> to love to have a little dig, don't they? When uh, some of your old Caterham rivals enjoyed yeah. your uh, moment. Well, oh, they? that's interesting. You've got have you got something to tell me about the GT1 race with a stupid <laughs> little smirky emoji? Oh yeah, hang on a minute. Let me just text you uh, my bad news, my awful news. <laughs> I feel absolutely mortified and devastated about. Let me just text you out of the blue to let you know. Uh, but some people like that, but it, that, that, I, I, I personally, I think um, uh, it's, it, it was one of those things. It's a bit of cosmetic no. damage. The wind came off, and um, no, no. but whatever you have, relive it. I'll never bloody there. forget it's it. A mark. <laughs> it's a scar. It's a scar uh, that you'll live with forever. Sadly, it is. But on that bombshell, <laughs> do not use this footage anywhere else. So you can say this is the man. But I am owning up to sadly. Yeah, forget. Move. We're moving on. Next, we get look forward to the uh, highlights of uh, Hungarian Grand Prix. Start looking at the future and uh, forget. Uh, yeah, last I, weekend's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone I went. Weekend. I w I went home, picked up my son Oliver, and uh, he gave me the biggest hug. And uh, I showed him. Showed him. He said, "Oh, that's nothing, Dad." And uh, so, uh, yeah, that was. And and put the world to right. So there you go. It wasn't even a crash. It was a brush with a what? straw. <laughs> I know. Um, anyway, yeah, it's a brush. What else is happening next week? Hungary, Jim? Hungary, Formula One, Daniel Formula Ricardo's Two, back. Formula Three. Oh yes, this will be the big thing. I mean, the whole the rest of the year. One of the highlights. Forget Max, who's won the championship by miles. You know, did did Yuki outdo Ricardo? That's what's going to go off the next Grand Prix. 
Now, IndyCar are going around back to an oval, a little tight seven-eighths of a mile oval at uh, Iowa. But interestingly, uh, in the NXT uh, series, has got its first oval of the year, which means Jamie Chadwick has had her first ever oval race. Had a she, what, she at Goodwood, is she? Yeah, she was at Goodwood. She she's such, how, she's such well, a she's, positive. She's, she's know, always she's, smiling. She's I so know, positive. Harry Ticknell, I had a chat with him, as you know. He said that, why haven't yeah. you got a position within British motorsport? Because you are the most... He, and I, sorry, Harry, I'm, I don't want to quote you on this because uh, it was a off the record. No, quote it. Is it something good? He, quote it. He said, you are the most supportive person of British motorsport, not for this podcast, just over the years, always supporting. You always supported the Young him. And, and uh, he said, why haven't you got a position in, in British mm. motorsport? So I don't know. I can't I'd like that, to. But, yeah. Well, it's um, just that, you know, as I, as I grew up as you know, a young British driver trying to you know, earn money as a professional, you know, managing to do so, so luckily in, in Le Mans and around the world on races. That's why I just love, you know, giving them, waving a flag to support these Brits. Because we've got um, young Foster over leading, or no, he's running high up in the NXT Championship. So obviously, we're looking forward to him as well. Um, so that's very interesting. So Iowa, that's the IndyCar around tight over, and the NXT, which is the usually race on the Saturday, if you check your timetables. It's usually show, on Sky Sports F1. Show our lovely viewers, the ones that are watching, uh, your your calendar, because this is how organised TIFF is. Show that, lift calendar, up your, calendar's all, it's all here. All, it's all, it's here, all, all handwritten. Here. It's all <laughs> it's meticulous. He is such a brilliant bloke. I, Adolf, I, I Adolf. love him. And thanks for being um, there for my, for my moment whoa. as well. Um, World Rally Championship goes oh, to Estonia. We're going on, are we? Don't forget, <laughs> yeah, you haven't finished yet. I'm not saying goodbye. <laughs> Kalle Rovanperä looks pretty sure to win his title again. He's got quite a big championship lead, but there's about four drivers battling for second spot. Evans, Ogier, Tanak, Nerville, could all, uh, they're all looking to be second. Uh, British GT goes down to Portugal, to the Algarve. British Superbikes, now here, if you've got the only thing going on, I think, this weekend in Britain, of major is the Brands Hatch Grand Prix British Superbikes. Whether it be beer and Ducatis and things like that, and it, it's just epic. The racing and it's the around best there is circuit epic. to watch yeah. motor racing, in yeah. my opinion, in the UK um, anyway. NASCAR's at Pocono, Pocono, and IMSA at Lime Rock, but I think it's no GTPs. Lime Rock's a very tight track, and it's just the GTs. So, who but are you yeah. supporting this weekend, Yuki or Daniel? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> yes, and we look forward. Yuki. To it. Hungary, Hungary is an interesting. One. A lot of core is in Hungary. Maybe the Red Bulls might finally. Like, everyone's catching up. McLaren, Manu McLaren, I think they said that the Silverstone suited them because it was high speed corners and more straights than the, the slow speed. And I, I don't, would you call Hungary slow speeds? I mean, it's a slow average, but it's a lot of lot of lot of corners. So maybe it won't suit uh, McLarens, or maybe maybe it'll suit Mercedes. Maybe Ferrari will come good. So. There's still intrigue in Formula One, much as we take the Mickey out of it. I've watched Formula One for about 50 years or something, so I'm not going to suddenly stop watching no, it just because I, I don't like it. it. We don't, we oh, don't no. take the Mickey out of it. We just get frustrated oh, about frustrated the Frustrated the way it's going, yeah. yeah. People, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm grown up with it. Um, so, yeah, what happens, I don't know. So, fascinating. Formula One, Formula Two, Formula Three. It's a full-packed weekend coming up, uh, and on. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you then. Next weekend, even. Like, I'm, so, I'm a bit spaced out this week. He's gone. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised you're with us. I thought I'd be doing this on my own. Me, me too, actually. <laughs>